Bryant Park. Uh, we're in the middle of Wimbledon, but more importantly, Jim Courier is here. You have a new role in the tennis world. How do you how do you watch tennis matches now? What is it? What what are your tells when you're watching? Well, I I find tennis matches interesting to watch at, at this space when I'm working in television. And I'm trying to interpret things for an audience to see. Right. I I find it interesting looking through two different lenses. One is through a coaching lens, which is mm -hmm. here's tactically what's going on. Right. And then there's a playing, uh, you know, looking back to my own history, there's an emotional lens of here's what the players are likely to be feeling mm -hmm. and sensing, and this is why these actions may or may not take place. And I can start to also semi-predict what, what is likely to happen based on my, my knowledge of the current players and also my past experiences living a lot of those situations. When you see the athletes that are playing now compared to the time you played and were constantly competing for majors, sure. where, where, where's the level? How does it compare now to that? Well, I think that the, the, certainly the guys at the top, there's a very special crew of four in the men's game yep. right now that have separated themselves from the pack. And, and their consistency is something that is not recognizable to, to me because no one in my era, era was ever to be as consistent as these guys so long, are. Yeah. And uh, I think some of that has to do with the homogenization of the court speed and the balls. I think that they can play a very similar style of tennis year round on any surface. That wasn't the case in, in my era or any other era prior to that. You had to make big adjustments from mm -hmm. clay to grass. Hard court was always a neutral surface, but indoors was very speedy, oftentimes as fast and low bouncing as grass. So th what these four players are able to do is is somewhat unrecognizable from a consistency standpoint. They also have bigger entourages. These guys yep. are much more professional than we were ever, ever able to be. They've got dietitians, they have physios, they have strength conditioning coaches. Uh, they're, they're doing ice baths, things that we didn't do for recovery. Their, their diet is very important to them on top of all the coaching and now a lot of the technology that they're bringing into uh, the strategy aspect of, of their preparation to play. Somebody outside of the top 20 that you're buying low with? Um, I think Jersey Janowicz is an interesting player because he has big weaponry and he has feel. I'm not sure where his head is. There, there's no clear cut, hey, this is going to be the guy mm -hmm. out there right now. The top four are of such a distance between them and the rest of the field. No one's really been able to, to break through and show that. And I haven't seen a, a single male player that you look at and you go, all right, this is a top five player, 100%. Wow. Unless they're injured, that's going to happen. I haven't seen it, but someone's going to be there. It's just a matter of time, but I, I think we're at a pretty special time where these top four guys are just suppressing everyone else. You're now obviously int intimately involved with American tennis with the yeah. Davis Cup. And there's always the, the question, what is wrong with American tennis, that they yeah. don't have that guy at the top? Do you see it more of a, a systemic thing, or do you think it's attracting athletes? Well, I don't think it's systemic, because if you look at, at the last great generation of Americans with Agassi and Sampras and Chang and Martin and Mal Washington who made mm -hmm. a Wimbledon final. Yep. You know, myself. And had a streaker at his Wimbledon final. Streaker, yeah, yeah, sure did. Yeah, <laughs> it was a good good image. Um, she was healthy. <laughs> yeah, she was. Um, none of none of us were, were generated by the USTA. None of us were generated by a right. tennis academy until we were already proven junior players. Right. It was family driven. It was really blind pot luck. And it was also a different time where the world wasn't as focused on creating tennis players. It was more, if you wanted to be a great tennis player, America was the place that you came for the, sure. you know, the first tennis academies, yep. Harry Hopman, Volatari. So is it still? I, I think it's still pot luck in, in one hand, in which case it just takes someone like a Richard Williams to decide I've got two wonderful athletes and I'm going to make them play tennis. Right. If that happened, then, then I think we could see some more champions grow. And look, there are a lot of people spending a lot of time and money trying to to assist and push. And uh, the USTA, I think, is doing a fantastic job of trying to allocate resources and try and, and yep. get the, the best junior players, give them the best chance to come forward. But the world is, is playing now. The world has all the same information that we have. They, they've even surpassed us, in my opinion, as far as training methods. I mean, you look, look at Spain and, and the players in Spain are so consistent, they're so measured, they're, the shot selection is so much better systemically than the Americans. Now, you may say that that suppresses a little bit of their flair and their flamboyance and whatever, right. you know, creativity, but you look at their record and you go, oh, they're, they're pretty successful. So uh, I don't think there's a silver bullet. I think that, that the, the fact remains that there are a lot of great countries now that, that are sending their best athletes into battle in the tennis court. That's just going to make it tough for us going forward. We played today at HSBC. They set up a grass court in Flatiron District in Manhattan. 
How are you evaluating my performance? Well, I, I'm giving your socks an A plus. Sure. Because the Absolutely. socks were uh, were a statement. It's They're always letting... good when somebody begins a physical evaluation of yeah. your tennis game. Yeah. Their footwear. Well, yeah. footwear sure. is important. I mean, you need to you First need to show to off your footwork, and yep. you couldn't miss your footwork because it was blinding. Yep. It really was, but. Uh, You've got a you've got great footwear. You've got a great mouth wedge. You talk a big game. Yep, I do. And, I do. and yep. you're aggressive. Mm-hmm. You're aggressive and confident out there. And I like all of that stuff. I you think can't that, coach hard. You, well, you can't coach the mouth wedge. Or just either. sarcasm. And yeah, general sarcasm and bring it on. The, my frustration was, I I wasn't used to the the dimensions of the court because I was right. trying to hit you. Obviously. And it's I the kept right move. missing you because I was an inti- I'm an intimidator. And the ball kept going long, and you kept calling it out, and you were right. And that hurts my feelings that you were right, because I don't like when other people are right. It, it happens. All right, right, elephant in the room, final question. Yeah. I have my own opinion, but I'm going to rely on you for this. Yes. Are you the greatest redheaded athlete of the past 25 years? The uh, past 25 years. Boris Becker may have something to say about that. That was sort of tail end, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. You have Lawless. Lawless, Lawless. Yeah, I, I do, get, do you feel I get like empathy about that when you sometimes. see guys? Do you like when you see Andy Dalton? Are I you like, feel, all right, brother? I feel sorry for anyone with our complexion who picked a job that's outside. Outside, it's a terrible idea. You know, your parents should know better than that. I should be like a studio engineer, like <laughs> setting microphones up for musicians. <laughs> but anyway, this is this is my uh, my lot. So right, I am on the record. Number one, ginger. I feel like is that you don't feel like that's a derogatory. I didn't want to use no, that. No, ginger's term. fine. I, Certainly, right. if I use it, I mean, I can call yeah, myself sure. a ginger. Yeah, sure. Number one ginger of the past 25 years. You heard him, you heard him say it. I in mean, tennis. I in think tennis, it, I think it's fair to definitely. say. Definitely. Who, who has there been? Becker. That's really since, about it. But since you, the there top. hasn't been somebody that's impressed? In, in ginger sphere? In the ginger sphere. No, not really. Wow. All no. right. Well, his name is Jim Courier. Again, we are in Bryant Park. And it has been an absolute delight. Thank you it very much for your time. Yeah. Wimbledon in New York City. Who knew?